What's cooking, Bianca Canary fans? Today we got a few updates regarding the Locatelli meeting yesterday of everything that went on, what happened, where we, where do we sit right now with Juventus and Sassuolo, and how do we foresee that going? Um, and then after that, we've got an update given from Dragusin's agent, who gives us an update and gives a statement that may ruffle a few feathers of Juventus fans, um, depending on where you sit on that situation. We'll try to clear things up, make sure you understand what's going on with that and what it may really mean. And then after that, we've got an update on Allegri's dream signing. Uh, we'll see who that is, what that is, uh, where the club looks to go. And then uh, we've got Frobota, a transfer update regarding him. I think DeMarzio dropped some information uh, recently. So we'll see about his future. And then, we've, like I said, we always have a little bit more sprinkled in here and there about all the other names that you want to hear and that you may be interested. Stay, uh, stay tuned and we'll show you what's up. Ciao, ragazzi. Welcome back to the Bank Zone. My name is Justin Sofro. Today is Thursday, June 24, 2021. And uh, before we get into the event, go ahead and smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. Stay up to date to all things Juventus by liking us and subscribing to our channel. We'll be able to provide you with more information, more talk, more of in the future, we'll have another guy and we'll have arguments going on. I'm sure you look forward to that. And just, we'll just be able to provide more for you overall. The more you like and the more you subscribe to the channel. Um, so but besides that, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the news of what we have today. So starting off, and I feel like this is getting a bit repetitive, but well, it's not repetitive news, but it's getting a bit repetitive starting off with this guy. But it's 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 the hot topic of the summer right now until we until we until it's solidified is Locatelli. Uh, first up, we have a Romeo Agresti with a report saying that Sassuolo has confirmed their interest in Dragusin from Juventus, and Juventus are pushing for a loan with an option to buy. Obligated. Another meeting is expected to take place next week. Um, we'll run through it. Like I said, we we have a lot of reports coming from multiple different sources. Each of them has a little bit more input or less, depending on who they are. Uh, so I'll go ahead and run through those first, and then we'll just then we'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, DiMarzio is saying that next week there will be a second meeting between the parties, and on that occasion they will enter into the details, starting to talk about formula, figures, players. Today's meeting was to understand the intentions of both parties, so they want to get to know you know what are their goals, um, what are they willing to do, what are they not willing to do before they set up the guidelines. Um, then we have Mirko Di Natale, who is saying that a positive meeting between Juve and Sassuolo for Locatelli took place. Juve, who would like to take him out on loan with an obligation to buy. There are good feelings there, even if nothing has been defined yet. Um, Nicolo Ballas <laughs> inputs his, um, his information, which says, in addition to Dragusin, Fajoli and Felix Cornea are being evaluated, but only one can be involved, involved in the deal for Locatelli, which um, I'm guessing of that group. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't realize it would only be one player, but that's a bit good information. That's why we go from multiple sources. Um, after that, uh, Luca Marchetti is saying that there was no talk about figures as in Euros today. That was yesterday. Uh, the clubs talked about youngsters, including Dragusin, De Grazza, and Fajoli. Uh, the feeling is that they are going towards a loan with an obligation to buy. Um, then we got La Stampa, who's saying that Locatelli is ready to sign a contract until 2026 at 3 million euros plus bonuses with Juventus. Uh, talks between both clubs are well underway. So we're getting good information on who the individuals, and then now we're starting to get a, a bit of information on the uh, situation uh, with just actually pertaining to Juventus and Locatelli, what he may agree to as a contract uh, for joining the club. We're looking at 3 million uh, euros a year plus bonuses, which for a player of his caliber compared to what we're playing, paying some of these guys um, is pretty spe spectacular starting out. Uh, and then the last one for this rundown of him, uh, for Locatelli, is uh, Giovanni Albanese who's saying that Juventus and Sassuolo will respect the will expressed by Locatelli. No Mercado interference during the key days of Euro 2020 to stay focused on the national team. He already expressed his approval for Juventus. So <laughs> that puts, not a damper, but that puts a bit of a slow on what we may be expecting, what we may be hoping for, because I know a lot of us, including yours truly, uh, which is kind of hoping, let's get this done now, get it out of the way so we can move on. Well, it appears according to um, Locatelli's wishes that it's not going to happen that way. We're going to wait until after the Euro 2020, um, whatever happens for Italia during this, for the Azzurri, uh, then we can move on. So if they win the whole thing, we're going to look after, what is it, July 11th or something like that. I don't have the exact date, but I think that might be it. Um, 
It'll be after that before we know his future. If we're lucky enough that Italy goes on to play in the final. Um, if not, we may hear back sooner. Um, given the situation with Locatelli, I'm still very confident that a deal will get done, that he will become a Juventus player. Um, so that's just where we sit right now. Uh, so some big, big little points or big little points. Some big points that I really took from this were the, um, that, you know, that Juve taking him out on a loan with an obligation to buy. That's a great deal for the club. Helps them fi- financially try to work it out with, uh, with that soil though. So that way they don't have to pay if they end up going, you know, 30 million, 40 million, whatever they have to end up paying to Sassuolo, they don't have to do it all in one lump sum, obviously. Um, another bit of information is the uh, possibility of doing a, uh, you know, obligation to buy as well, maybe possibly for the youngsters, including Dragosin, De Grasa, Fajoli, uh, for that amount that they're thrown in there. Um, let's see. My Dragosin seems to be the, the sticking point for most of this. Uh, I feel like Felix uh, Correa, or at least Correa, was kind of a newer name or like a less popular name thrown out there for uh, potentially going to uh, Sassuolo than a lot of the names you're hearing so far. So we're just going to, you know, we're going to keep keep our ear to the ground, see where it goes from here. I, I'm still very confident that a deal will get done. They, um, you know, he's a Juventus fan. He grew up being a Juventus fan. I know I've, I'm very confident that Locatelli will become a Juventus player when all things are said and done. But, <laughs> the uh, one part that may uh, ruffle a bit of feathers is the situation, uh, or at least the statement given by Dragusin's uh, agent and what he said today. Um, with C- C- or not, today, yesterday, with CMI TV, um, he stated that I've never seen anyone like him. He will reach very high levels because he puts in so much effort and works so hard. This is about Dragusin. Uh, Radu wants to stay at Juventus, he doesn't want to leave. There have been offers from England, from Germany. But he wants to play at Juventus. Nobody has called us. I sent a message to the Juve directors today, and they told me there's nothing. If he leaves, it's to go and play, but he wants to stay at Juventus. Um, I think you may see a pattern in the statement. I spoke to his mom. <laughs> his mom. I spoke to his mom, and they were looking for a house, but I told him not to move until August 31st. I hope he stays at Juve. It depends on Sassuolo's program. We'll see what path they plan to take. We have to be careful which path we take. At this age, he has to play and he has to grow. He has to get angry if he doesn't play. It depends on the project. So the last little part, maybe, I don't want to say it's a saving grace, but it may be, you know, give us a little bit more insight to the situation. A lot of this right now, the reason he may be saying so before, when I say about ruffling feathers and all that, it may be, you know, people are nervous. Oh, no, is Dragosin going to refuse to go? Is he going to ruin this deal for Juventus? Are they going to lose out on him because of another player who refuses to leave or refuses to, you know, branch out or whatever? I don't think that's the situation. I think the way where it stands is basically he and uh, Juventus and his agent haven't had a conversation. They haven't really been uh, communicating that much about the situation, where they're going to go with it. Um and like he said at the end, though, the saving grace is like he realizes that Dragosi needs to play. If he's not going to be playing for Juventus, he's wasting his time in his youth where he could be growing and then, you know, um, pr- um, producing. I don't know why I couldn't get to producing. Producing on the field, raising his value and, you know, d- creating a career for himself where he can actually live, you know, comfortably financially off this. So, you know, he would be doing himself a disservice by staying at Juventus if he's not going to get to play. So that's what an option they look at. They could, maybe they could, you know, do a loan with a buyback option for um, Dragusin if he goes to a Sassuolo or something like that. We haven't heard any, co- you know, no confirmation about what the plan is, where they're going to go with that um, yet, but it's something to look out for. Uh, I'm not too worried about Dragusin as it sits right now. If we start hearing more and more things about he's not going, he refuses to go then it may be a problem. Um, my main thing is, and I know there's a lot of people who are big on Dragosin who want to keep him, and I completely understand those points of view. Um, I look at the, you know, the list of who we have. Maybe I would say Kalea would be one that I would say because I'm not, I'm just not super invested in him right now. We're looking at defenders who we need, and I would, it would like, be nice to keep Dragosin if possible, but um, I would hate to lose Fajoli the most. He'd be the one that I really want to keep of anybody that I want to protect that asset going forward. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think about this? What do you think about the statement given by the agent? Do you think that this is going to be a problem for Juventus? Do you think it's going to be um, 
a positive for Juventus for you who would rather keep him and have him stay here with the club? Or do you just think it's a non-issue and they'll cross that bridge when they get there? It's just when it comes to negotiations, when it comes to the situation Juventus, they just haven't gotten there um, with the, you know, bartering to send him to Sassuolo, where he can go to Sassuolo, where he can grow and where he can, you know, up his game. Um, and then we have, a, talking about Fajoli, we have a Sky Italia that is reporting that Sassuolo would like to include Fajoli in the Locatelli deal. However, Allegri asked the club to keep him. Max thinks he can play his part in the team. So that's something to keep an eye on. Like I said, we were just talking about that. Uh, Fajoli could be a piece of cog that they could lose if situations fall apart with that. I feel like Allegri wants to keep him, but is he going to, you know, is he going to hold firm on that? If for some reason that Fajoli could be a key, a key piece to end up getting Locatelli, who is a proven commodity, who has this bright future with Juventus that we know for sure, you know, that you got to get that done. So we'll see what goes on with that. Keep an eye on it. Uh, Gazzetto's Daily Sport is reporting that Milinkovic Savage remains Allegri's dream signing. That's the top one that he wants, um, maybe for the midfield to include him. Uh, that's kind of new to me. I didn't know that. Um, Maybe it was something back in the day. Maybe I just forgot and blanked on it. Uh, but anyway, a deal that remains difficult to do, and it depends on Ronaldo's future. So basically, if Ronaldo's staying, more than likely he's not coming. Um, but it's something to keep an eye on going forward. Um, what are your thoughts on Lincoln and Savage? Obviously, he would be a great addition for the club. Um, just is it feasible right now? We will see. And who? how likely would Lazio be? Again, we talked about this before, to deal with Juventus and bringing him here. Then uh, DiMaggio is uh, breaking this news, basically saying that Frobota to Genoa was done this morning. Alone with an option to buy, with uh, Frobota going to Genoa, Juventus will have a buyback option for the player. I like these kind of deals, especially if you know that Frobota, you give him a lot of chance to grow and get out there, especially if you know it seems like Allegri is not going to spend a lot of time nearly playing him as much as Pirlo did last year. And Pirlo played him at the beginning, and then he tapered off, and you didn't see him a lot at the end of the season. Um, but I like this. I love the option of having the buyback option um, where you don't risk losing that player as much while, you know, saving some resources and letting him grow for the time being. Uh, moving on to the sport is uh, reporting that Juventus and Milan are, are competing for Caio Jorge. Um, Santos is open to selling for 10 million due to his expiring contract. In these last days, the contacts between Juve and the entourage of the player have intensified. Both Milan and Napoli are also interested. Um, so that is uh, definitely something new. That's a new one that's popped up. Uh, basically, it appears the player. So let's see. He's got a market value of about 10 million euros. He's a 19-year-old uh, striker. Uh, definitely got a big future in front of him. Definitely an option to look forward to. Um, besides that, I have I personally have not seen a lot of this player play. Um, I need to, you know, check back and see what I can see. Maybe I can get a look into that this evening, give you my better thoughts today. If you've seen this player, if you know much about him, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you, your thoughts on him as in uh, or becoming a you know future striker for Juventus. Would he become a U23 player? Is that the kind of quality he is? Let me know. And then uh, La Stampa is also reporting that the uh, Juventus are keeping an eye on the Flam Flamingo goalkeeper, Diego Alves. So that's another name for the goalkeeper lineup from the long list of names that we've seen and that we have for the potential, uh, you know, backup role of goalkeeper, especially since we have uh, Chesney, who I think his Polish team got eliminated yesterday. Um, or was it the day before? All the days are running together <laughs> lately with me, so I apologize. Anyway, so just another look at, um, you know, a potential backup goalkeeper for the club. And then uh, Nicola Shira is reporting that Dimmerdal, so... Here we go. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. I know some people definitely disagreed with my take. I don't think it was that hard to take, but it was just an option, something I was throwing out there. Um, basically saying that Dimonal's agents have talked with Tottenham in the last hours. He could leave the club this summer. Patatici appreciates him. We know Patatici is a big Dimonal guy. That's why he, he brought him here into Juventus. Um, and definitely that has been like the hottest name. Um, especially when you're looking at the Premier League, Tottenham definitely with um, Patatici going there would be the biggest option. You know, I know I said Atlanta or whatever, they have trouble paying that. Tottenham has Premier League money, and that might be something that would appeal to the Turkish um, player, especially, like I said, we know that he's one of our top options to make a sale for the capital game. 
Um, and then really uh, the last bit of news that we have today is just the um, UEFA dropped this news um, within the last couple of hours or so on their Twitter account saying that the go- the away goals rule will be removed from all UEFA club competitions from the 2021-2022 season. Ties in which the two teams score the same number of goals over the two legs will now have two 15-minute periods of extra time and, if required, penalty kicks. Um, let me know your um, thoughts on this, on what your thoughts overall. Because I want to hear because we have a pretty diverse fan base, or at least a, um, a community. I don't want to say fan base. We have a pretty d- diverse community when it comes to uh, people um, with the channel that'll let me know what their thoughts are. Cause I know you have a very different opinion than maybe I have here living in America In America. I don't, I don't love, I never loved the away goal rule and how, how that worked. I, I preferred even goals gives you equal opportunity playing back and forth to have a chance. Um, I know sometimes say you play the leg away and you perform, perform poorly. And then if the other guy, if the other team comes in and scores a goal, you're basically, you're, you're out of it. Cause you're, you know, you're two or three down uh, right away. And it's just, it's just a miserable situation. I like this. I think it's more exciting. I think it gives teams way more opportunities to come back to win. I just, I'm, I'm a big proponent of that. I just don't think it was necessary to do the away goal being worth more than the home goal. Let me know your thoughts, especially for like the last season or so where home and away really didn't mean much. Cause you didn't have really fans out there um, until maybe, you know, the champions league championship game. But let me know your thoughts. If it's something that you're really invested in that you think, no, this is a strong part of our game and what it means, let me know why you think that way, um, why you think it shouldn't be gone, it shouldn't have, should be gone or shouldn't be gone. Uh, let me know about that. And I just, I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear a dialogue between, um, you know, other, other football fans than myself and like what I'm used to. Cause that's, that's really like what we have here. And I like, it's always every other sport that like I play and I play American football, stuff like that. It's always overtime first before you go into anything where just, you know, you convoluted uh, point systems and all that. But anyway, that's all the news I have for you today. Uh, Be sure to check in with us tomorrow to get a a rundown of all things Juventus and any updates we have going around all these stories. I'm sure you'll hear a lot more about Locatelli. I'm sure you'll hear a lot more names popping up. Uh, Things are only going to keep heating up as the Euros drag on. And then once we hit that July 1st mark uh, where the, um, you know, um, all the transfer market opens up. Please do like the video and please do subscribe to the channel. I can't emphasize that enough how much subscribing to the channel really does help us. It helps us provide, it helps our outreach to our channel. It helps it grow, but it also helps with um, the future, the things that we want to do to be able to provide that for you. We really want, like I said, what I'm excited about is getting you all involved in the channel and, and establishing a dialogue, not just with me talking at you, but you talking back and forth with me, your opinions, your experiences, um, everything like that. I want to hear it. So I'm excited about that. Um, and definitely, um, reach out to me if you're interested in possibly participating in this kind of a experiment we're going to have going forward. Uh, but make sure you follow the Beyond Canary Zone at Beyond Canary Zone on Twitter and Instagram and follow me at Justin Sofro on Twitter. Forza Juve, Forza Beyond Canary and Forza Azuri.